This is the ninth dialogue between J. Krishnamurti and David Bohm in Gushdad, 1975. I think your watch is a little bit fast. Oh. Oh, no, don't go on. No. I'll try to be punctual. Mm -hmm. uh, well, perhaps we should... Uh you know, go on with what we're discussing the other time, you know, to clarify the, some of these points. And we were discussing uh, the action of truth, you know, and uh, if I could sum up, I think on one discussion, I said that, as I can understand, that the thought process may, if it is straight and healthy, it may... Uh, become aware of the action of truth yes, and yes. move in uh, harmony with that. And on the other hand, the thought process, when it is distorted and conditioned, uh, may not do that. Yes, that's right. But truth can actually act physically in the brain cells of what we were coming that's to. That's what we're talking about. To, yes. to bring it right. <clears throat> uh, now, and I thought... Sir, yeah. would that be accurate? I don't know. I mean, you see, we're trying to go into that. I think so, but... Yeah, I'm, I know you think so, yes. You see, I, this, I feel that way. I think we should discuss it a little while. Little while, yeah, I think because, so too. Because uh, it's a very important point, and it's quite yes. contrary to our traditional uh, scientific knowledge. Nowadays, after reading that article... Well, really perhaps <laughs> not after reading uh, about parapsychology and so on, but since the scientific tradition is changing, too. But, too, yes. Uh, but anyway... Uh, we could say, see, the brain is material. Now, I think we're saying that matter exists. It has an actuality apart from thought, but we don't know it. You see, all we know only some of it. We, we just say that's reasonable. In other words, the uh, the complete depths of matter are unknown to us and uh, would perhaps never be known. We may know more and more. And the brain is being made of matter, constituted of matter. It, we could never follow the complete... In, unknown depths in which thought arises in matter, right? <laughs> right? But uh, thought has become conditioned over the ages, we said partly by heredity and partly through tradition and culture, tradition, culture environment. Then. And it has been conditioned to self-deception, to falsify, you know, to, to distort. distort. Yes. And this is in the material structure of the brain. Now, and then we say truth well, I would like to add a point there. Eh? Yes. That we could, in one sense, say um, that uh, this conditioning constitutes a, a, a subtle kind of brain damage. That is... That's right. See, I'd like to go on to that. If we take a well, like piece of delicate electronic equipment, such as an amplifier or a computer, now, if that is overloaded, then there is distortion. This, this now, if you keep on overloading it, you gradually may break down right. the parts, and therefore it will distort more. Yes. Uh, now, uh, so we could say that the kind of conditioning we were talking about, the conditioning which uh, gives great importance to thought so and to the self in the center, that creates an distort. overload. It overloads, distorts, and gradually uh, yes, damages the, the dam brain. Damages the brain, yes in a way that is perhaps too subtle to be detected by scientific instruments, except when it has gone very far. <laughs> yes. Uh, no. Completely. Uh, but still, it is there, you see. No. Yes. We are, are you saying, sir, <coughs> that when the brain is overloaded mm -hmm. by environment, by economic conditions, Socially, and by fear and sorrow, sorrow and all the rest, the, all the things that are going on in human beings, it does damage the brain cells. Yes, I think that is so. Yes, yes. that can be accepted. Yes, it, there's a real physical chemical can, damage to yeah, the brain cells, yes. and um, now those damaged brain cells uh, will dis produce thought that is inherently distorted. Distort, right, and therefore, right. as thought tries to correct that damage, it does it so from a distorted... It because it is distorted, it must make it worse. That's right. That's right. Now, from there, 
<coughs> can there be a total perception which heals the Yes, that's completely. what we discussed, to heal the brain cells. Now, yes. uh, so, so let's... Uh, was something I wanted to say. Uh, uh, yes, well, that is, uh, the, the, the one point is that the brain does not recognize this brain damage very clearly, but it attributes it to something else. Do you see that, uh, for example, you know, it may attribute it to feeling uneasy or to uh, or else to some external circumstances in other words or it blames on, on anything else do you yes. see it and uh, uh, the uh, I think that a great deal of this damage to the brain occurs in, in tradition do you see this See, it occurred to me tradition is a form of brain damage quite quite uh, that is uh, quite. Uh, the the uh, I agree. Any tradition, good or bad, that is that. Um, what it does is it gets people to uh, accept a certain structure of reality from by you know very subtly without realizing they are doing it by imitation or by example or by uh, word you know by just by statements and, uh, and so very steadily the child builds up. An approach in which uh, he, the brain attributes things which are in the tradition to a reality that is there independent of tradition. Do you see? Yes, yes. Right, and it gives it tremendous importance. And yes. you can see this in the oldest cultures, like mm -hmm. in India, and you know, this distortion and damage to the brain through tradition. Right, I think it's in every culture. I was just reading about the Australian, the people who originally lived in Australia, the Aborigines, yeah, and they have a d very different tradition, which they have what they call dream time. In other words, and while, while they're dreaming, they think it's another time, which was also before being born and after oh, dying. I see. And they have a tradition of getting into the dream time by means of a series of initiations and rituals at a certain age of adolescence. And... Um, in that dream time, they can function very differently. They can go into the desert and uh, live there under conditions intolerable, intolerable to ordinary people. Quite. So, you see, it has a tremendous effect, this tradition. Quite, quite. It has real quite. effects of all sorts, which may be, even be valuable in some ways. But at, at the same time, it conditions the brain to a certain view of reality, which is fixed and... Uh, they they say at least I read somewhere that um, people who don't share this dream time are unreal. You see, quite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, now and in fact, the same thing happens in our culture. That we are see that was the point I wanted to come. I think we have to discuss culture at great length. Uh, yes, right because so. this now in our culture we get a conditioning which looks very different, but it is basically similar in structure as to what is sense to be real and necessary and right, what you have to make of your life, you see, what sort of person you should be, <laughs> and uh, so on, you know, what's really the right thing to do. <laughs> and uh, all of this is picked up in very tiny little indications that don't seem to be thought, but seem to be the perception of reality. Quite. And therefore, the brain is beginning to treat thought as some reality independent of thought. It's becoming fragmented. And... Um, uh, so that a person then may look at reality and say, that's reality, I've got to keep my feet on the ground, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but this ground has been created by tradition, Should by thought. By thought <laughs> it's no ground, you see, it's, <laughs> it has nothing under it at all. <laughs> uh, quite, quite. Uh, and it is sustained by this brain damage, do you see? That is, it is nourished and sustained by this damaged brain which is unable to get out of that uh, circle. Uh, now, but still, I think we have to go into culture very carefully because culture also has valuable it's about uh, certain values, yes. values which cannot be discarded. 
And you see, one of the dangers that could arise in an uncritical look at what you say is that somebody might want to discard culture, you see, because um, it's not clear, you see. Uh, so what do, what does that word culture mean, uh, to cultivate? Based on cultivate, cultivate. Yes, and mm. also cult. Yes, cult, yes. That is to grow. To grow, but that's grow. also the basic meaning of the word create. I looked it up in the dictionary, is to cause to grow. Cause to grow, yeah, that's what it is. Uh, so, therefore, in some sense, unless we get it clear, we, you know, we're going to be unclear about creation. You see, in other words, there may be some tendency to treat culture as creation. As creation. <coughs> and yet, you see, we cannot discard culture and just drop it. Drop it quite, I understand. Uh, but there is some confusion so, around it. What do we mean by culture? That which grows, that which is capable of... Growth, growth, which is passed on. You see, what what grows passes on from one generation, generation to another. You see, even the word nature is the same root. Now, to be born, you see, is its basic yes, not root. Nature, of course. And uh, and in Greek, uh, the word is physis, the same as physics, which means to grow. You see, so uh, these are very deep concepts, which mm. are very general. I mean, from the savage living in a cave to modern man is called culture, growth. Yes, or the savage may himself have his own growth. His own, of course, of course. I mean, which... <coughs> his own culture. His own culture, and we impose our culture on him, and he breaks down, you see. That's what's happened yeah. in various... Yes. And then some anthropologists say his culture is just as valid as ours, and, yes, yes. and so on, you see. Yes. What benefit has culture? Well, that's what we have to look into. You see, that's what I'm asking. What benefit has culture? Well, let's look at several aspects of culture. You see, science, art, music, uh, literature, uh, technology, uh, yeah. and I mean, at, at the very least, you say every culture has a, a certain technology with which it approaches reality. You know, certain methods have been developed to live, you know, to grow things, to make things. To has has thought created culture, of course. It has, yes. It has. And, and that, some culture seems to be necessary for man to survive, you see. Yes. I wonder if it is necessary. Well, perhaps it isn't, but at least uh, it appears to it be. It appears. Let's question it. Yeah. But I wanted to go a little further. You yeah. see that... Um, we take science as part of our culture, now art is part of our culture, now music. For example, you have often said you listen, you enjoy listening to, very, to good music, and, and that is part of our culture, you see. Yes, I understand. But I think there is a danger, mm -hmm. isn't there, of depending on it. Yes. Well, of, Having uh, using it as a means to go beyond or achieve or penetrate into something else. Well, let's try to make that clear, you yeah. see, because, see, let's say, uh, let's take the example of music, Mozart or Beethoven. Now, you say that here is a, would you say that there was some insight and something beyond mere the mechanism of thought to create that? Uh, yes, hmm? I thought about it too. Now, admit, you're a musician. Mm -hmm. Well, let's say a composer. I mean, composer. a person who creates new yeah, music. Great right? composer. And all composition, putting down the notes and all the rest of it, is the work of thought. Yes, but that's not enough to. I mean, anybody can put down anybody, notes. Anybody, but I won't go a little bit. Yeah. So that that is the result of thought. Mm -hmm. Then is. Does he, he listens to the music, doesn't he, before he puts it down? I don't know how, what kind of imagination he's got. Of the, you know, Beethoven I mean, yes. was deaf, but he somehow could imagine the music, I suppose. But he must have heard it. Well, he heard it when he was not deaf, but then when he made new music while he was deaf, he never heard it. So you're saying 
the hearing is not necessary. Well, perhaps in the beginning it was, but later it was. In the beginning, Beethoven became deaf. Therefore, in the beginning, it was necessary. Well, I mean, it was. He heard it. He heard it. Yeah. And when he became deaf, he no longer heard it. No, he could hear no music at a certain stage. He therefore, where, how did he, how did he, how did he capture it? I don't know. You see, I'd say through some kind of uh, in, inner perception. Uh, no, as we usually call imagination. Wait a minute, so wait a minute. He may have heard it in, inwardly. Wait a minute. Let's go slowly. It's mm-hmm. rather interesting. When you are speaking now, yes. uh, do you think it out and then speak? No, you don't. No. Why? Well, it's clear that uh, that there is a, a formation of uh, the meaning first. I mean, in other words, whatever I mean to say comes first. How does that happen? Well, I don't know if we can say exactly how. You see that that... I mean, I'm, when I get on the platform, mm-hmm. I talk. Fortunately, unfortunately, I talk. I don't think. If I thought it out, it would mm-hmm. all go wrong. I've done that before. I what? just write it down. Yes. Enormous notes. Mm-hmm. And then make a go over it endlessly, make a resume of it, and then I would read it and one yeah, day well, done. It doesn't go, but, but sometimes it is valuable to make very rough notes. No, no wait a minute. Yeah. And Dr. Besson I mean, yeah, said to like, me, yeah. why do you bother with the notes? Just yeah. say what you want to say. First time I got really dizzy about it, oh. and gradually I said, what? Well, hmm? Is there a thinking hearing the words, all that, when one speaks? No, I mean, uh, the speech comes before thought, as a rule. Speech comes before... The... Ah, just let us see that. Speech comes... But you, the speech, <coughs> the words... There is some scientific evidence on that, as a matter of fact, uh, that it has been... People have watched carefully the kind of mistakes that are made when sometimes in words, the use of words, and I can't remember the details, but no, the, it the mistakes are such that it looks as if an entire phrase or a sentence or a paragraph is formed all at once and then it comes out, do you see? In other words, from the way the mistakes are made, it would only have been possible to make them if the entire no, structure... but say, for instance, Dr. Besant was a great orator, yeah. first or supposed yeah. to be. She said she used to see the phrases in front of her. Well, that's one way, but... Now, I'm questioning, I want to marry yeah. this a bit. Does speech come before thought? I use English to, to tell you something. The usage of English is, is memory. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I re- use that memory and talk. Well, in the same way, when you walk, you see, you had to learn to walk. Mm-hmm. And to a certain extent, that learning was, you know, then becomes actually easy and so part of you. Part of quite. And other speech in the same so way becomes part of you. Right? Speech comes before thought. It may. I mean, it it, may. there's some evidence that it may. Or else, thought itself may be different from what we thought. I mean, what we, you know, may have a different structure from what is generally attributed to. So we are talking about culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Culture is growth from childhood to manhood and so on and so on. The expression of one's feelings must be thought. Put it down yes. to the word. Or notes. Or notes, anything. And when you speak, when you give, deliver a lecture, you write it out or you talk as you go, you express as you go along. Hmm? Yes. 
That means it must have all been stored up inside. Well, not necessarily. I mean, it's a, that particular order in which it appears may be the result of perception at that moment. Yes, that's what I want to get at. Yeah. That's what I want to get at. I mean, some of the material may have been stored up, but then the particular way it comes out depends on perception. Perception of what? Well, that's what we want to find out, you see. I mean, it's perception? Well, I... I, I talk, unfortunately, not fortunately. I seem to be talking, if I may be a little bit mm -hmm. personal, from emptiness. I don't know if that can... Mm. From... I have talked for so many years. It comes... Now, through long practice, you can say that, that the thing flows out. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yes. But if I think about it previously, it doesn't flow out. Well, if you think, yes. I mean, but you may think a little, for example. I mean, you told, I, at, at times you said, uh, you have told me, no, you were thinking about something about, this morning. I, Yes, an idea happens. Yeah, right? I know. Uh, something you see. Yes. But if I if I think about it previously mm -hmm. and store it, then it goes somehow it messes up. Yeah. But I see something, then let it work itself out as I talk. Yes. So is there not a state? I'm just where thought is not in operation as memory and all the rest of it. I guess you're right. Perception. Perception as you go along. Yes, well, when we ask the question of what, what do we perceive? Perceive. Or? I'm just one. Perception as we go along. Yes. That's right. That's what actually takes place. Now, what is perception there? Would you call it perception? Or... I don't know. It's not insight. Then it's a perception. Insight is a perception. A Insight kind of is perception. perception. Um, is it to perceive, I don't know, when you understand, let's say you perceive the meaning of what has, is said, for example, as a, as a... Can is it possible to to say something without the operation of thought, except the usage of words? I can't hmm. get at it. How does one talk? Well, wouldn't it be possible that the uh, movement of uh, thought of words might be similar to any other movement? You see, if you perceive an object and you start to move Towards toward it. it or away from it, it needn't involve thought. No, no. Or at least not, except for the stored up information about the object. But I mean, the. Uh, but it, it needn't fundamentally depend on thinking about it, right? No. Now, could you say that when we talk, the vocal cords respond in a similar way, you see, like, like, as they might to a perceived object? Yes, yes. But it's much more than that, surely. Yes, um, yes, it's more than that, but I meant that the actual... Either you see the words in a 
and you read them. Oh, I don't do that. You don't do that. No. Or you have talked so long, one has talked so long, or so many years, it becomes a, not a habit. Or a skill, and perhaps. Huh? A skill. It becomes skill. There's a certain S skill in Skill in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's certain skill in the, it. The whole thing takes place without conscious direction. Yes. But that doesn't answer no. it. <laughs> Is there, an, I mean, maybe something relevant about if we come back to the unconscious mind as well, since part of the process seems to be not conscious. Uh, I mean, there may be that unconscious mind which is just dimly aware and, and unrepressed, but then sometimes there's a one seems to regard the unconscious mind as something more than that. You see, for example, you said at times that you were speaking to the unconscious, yes, which yes. is a different kind of kind unconscious. Of, yes, and uh, perhaps I'll just remind you if you probably know that some people studying the brain have found the two sides, the left and the right, and see one is more is primarily verbal, I forget which, I think it's the right hand side, I'm not sure. And the other side is primarily non verbal. Non verbal, say. yes. Uh, and they call that possibly unconscious. See there are cases where they have cut the connections, you've read about perhaps between the two sides of the brain and it seems when they are cut one side doesn't quite know what the other side is doing. <laughs> and one person may say in words that he hasn't doesn't know anything about something when in his actual action he's doing it <laughs> as he may see something and respond to it with his movement mm, quite. but if you ask him about it he doesn't know anything about it <laughs> quite 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 <laughs> as, I know, no 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 this, right, right. no quite quite I understand. Right, so they have said that perhaps one side of the brain is the unconscious and the other side is the yes. verbal side is conscious. conscious I don't know uh, but then there, obviously there's a deeper part of the brain the base which is common no that's the part where uh, the uh, feelings are and the it's the center of, uh, of attention and the center of emotion and so on which probably connects both sides but it works on both sides I, 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 quite yeah now uh, would you say that possibly there is an unconscious uh, mind which is not merely forgotten or repressed or you know which works when you talk you see or, I can't find it. Huh? Wait a minute. When, sir, look. You make notes and you read. That's one way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you have done that for a number of years, then you get a certain skill. That's one thing. <coughs> then, the skill in talking. But that is that's not the answer. What takes place? Well, see, whatever you say does not come from the purely verbal part of the brain, you see. Yes, I mean, yes. unless it's rather trivial. Of course, of course. And now one view is that it may come from something deeper, which, which you're not conscious, generally. You see, uh, the, the, there was, for example, this these studies where the brain was cut, and it appears that, say, the perception of music is on this side of the brain, which is the opposite of the word. You say the perception of visual things and so on. And there seems to be a, a function of the brain that is nonverbal. No, it may yeah. still be a, a thought of some kind, I don't you know, very much less defined, you no, know, not, not verbal thought. I mean, it may somehow, it can be conditioned, so memory may still be in it. Now, you see, what we're doing is we're coming out with... Then there's a connection of those two. So the word could express something which is nonverbal. So is there, in the brain, untouched by culture, by anything? Uh -huh. Well, that's a question that science couldn't uh, at present consider because, you know, it's beyond anything that anybody could do because uh, we don't know what that would mean, you see, from the material point of view. See, in other words, if we say there's a certain material structure to the brain, I, 
there's no way at present to tell whether it's tell been whether touched quite, by culture quite, or not. Quite, quite, quite. Uh, it's because at present our way of looking at it is too crude anyway. Would I, would you, if I say something about it, would you listen? Yes. Not discard it, throw it out. We said, let's begin, we said consciousness, content and all the rest of it. If that content be emptied, and emptied in the sense mm, no longer conditioned, mm, is there a part of the brain where nothing, where no tradition, no time, nothing has touched? Nothing has made imprint on it. Not possibly, no. See, we, we wouldn't say possibly. It's a part. I mean, because you don't. Do you think it's somewhere a particular part of the brain? Or Not only a, a particular part of the brain, but particular consciousness, which is not this consciousness. Another the, consciousness, I used Another say. consciousness. Right. Which may be another function. Or is it another part? Is it what are you saying? No, not no. Let me get yeah. it. My brain is conditioned. Tradition, mm -hmm. culture, yes. uh, heredity. All right, and that means it's damaged and damaged. No. Damaged. And it has healed itself. Completely. Yes, you say it was damaged and healed itself. Healed itself. Suppo we suppose, take, I mean. I'm taking, suppose I'm my brain, mm. healed itself. Now, it is unconditioned. Yes, but how can it heal itself if it's damaged? Huh? See, the question is, how can it have healed he itself? Heal itself by, mm, through, having an insight or perception which is not the perception of the damaged. Wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, I understand, yes. But we'll say the whole brain is not, the brain is not damaged through and through, but there's a certain damage, damage to the brain, brain. but there's yes. still a function right. that is oh, not damaged. That's right, right. that's right. Oh. And is there a consciousness which is totally different from the conditioned consciousness, which functions, operates, when, when, you, when a really great composer has that mm, perception. perception. Well, let's say we want to discuss the composer. Let's say it's Beethoven, uh, mm. and he's deaf, but he has a perception. Now, let's say we know his brain was damaged. You know, he was often very disturbed mentally. Very disturbed man, poor <laughs> chap, I know. Uh, and yet, you say there was a part of his brain or a function or something which could uh, work anyway, and despite that damage. Despite that damage. Because if he was really damaged, he couldn't have been... Yeah, if he had been damaged uh, deeply, if Deep, he went through, well, it was... But would you say, in general, damage, uh, even cultural damage, is not deep? I mean, uh, it may appear deep, but it, perhaps it isn't. Yes, hmm. I think it is not too deep. Not too deep, no. Would you say that? Yes, I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it works on a certain level. Oh, so I, if my brain is damaged as a, in tradition. Hmm. I can step out of it. Yes. The brain says, rubbish. Yes, well, the damage is in certain functions of the brain which are based on memory. Yes, uh, and you can put it aside. Memory is not really a deep function of no, the brain, you no, see, though it no. may appear, it may uh, that's right, that's right. treat itself as deep, you see, or attribute to itself the uh, death. Uh, if, I, if I'm a Catholic, I see, I talk with you, and the reason you show me all the rest, I talk finished. I'm out. No well, longer I mean, a Catholic. Yes. Well, in general, you see, 
I mean, in principle, I think it's right. What actually happens is that a person may see this in a flash of insight, but a certain I, part of the damage attributes to itself... Uh, uh, fear. Yes, it attributes to itself the property of being very deep and beyond thought, do you quite, see? Quite, quite, quite. And therefore, it escapes this insight, do you yes. see? Uh, so it doesn't mean that the, that the damage is deep, but the but the damaged part attributes to itself great depth. Yes, quite, quite. Uh, now, so that often it is not enough merely to say, you know, a person who is a Catholic, you know, it might be explained to him and he'll see it in that moment, but a little I'm, later... No, he'll, wait a minute, wait a minute. You say I'm attached, hmm? say yeah. for instance, I'm attached to my wife, yeah. or to something. And because I am, I, I respect and I listen, I'm fairly sensitive to what you're saying, hmm? then it's finished. I, it's over. Deep. I, I'm never attached anymore. Well, it doesn't commonly happen that way, you see. Why? Well, that's what we want to find out. I mean, say, Why? I was proposing one reason, which is that uh, this conditioning uh, uh, attributes to itself some uh, significance which is very deep and beyond mere uh, memory and thought. You see, let's say, suppose I'm a Catholic and I'm brought up in the Catholic tradition, I've been exposed to it, you know, very non-verbally and subtly. It has left uh, all sorts of marks. And uh, then when I become a bit frightened, once again, I'm, it all uh, seems so real, you see. Yeah, yeah. And therefore, I forget what you've said. <laughs> of course, of course. But uh, easy... No, wait a minute, but I'm not... Yeah. I don't, that's too easy. No, but that's what actually happens. Actually, I actually but I think there's something deeper than this. Right, what so is let's it, yeah. go into it a little right. bit. I'm just... Uh, saying, it may not be. If I listen to you, because you are serious, you have detached yourself, and you show it to me, and you say, look, listen. And because I respect you, because I listen to you, because I'm attentive, what you say has, has a tremendous meaning, and it is true. The truth of it, mm. not the rationalization of it, but the truth of what you're saying. Yes, but uh, say even say that the, the, there is the tremendous tendency in this traditional conditioning to, you know, to resist that truth. To I, I'm not resisting it. Yes, I, I'm. I, of course, I. Because first of all, I want transformation. Mm -hmm. That's basic necessity for me mm -hmm. as a human being. Yes, but then there's the other necessity of security. You see, which we, we've discussed. I, you showed to me through transformational mm -hmm. boy. There is tremendous security. Right, but you see, isn't that shown? Wait, so, wait. Yeah. You yeah. see, I, I, you point out to me that if I transform myself totally, there you will be eternally... <laughs> uh, uh, what? Eternally safe, hmm? mm. secure, um, all the rest of it. Because you have seen it, because you have uh, got it, mm. I, to me, then it's... A, when you say something, it's a shock. I see it. If, but if I haven't transformed, if I am not, if I'm a crook, mm -hmm. <laughs> phony, then whatever I say will happen. Right, but then how do you account for the fact, you know, that you've been talking ah. for so many years and, you know, it has had... You know, I don't, I think so. Basically, people won't listen. Yes, but now let's uh, come to that. Why not? You see, we're still on the same point. same point. Why not? Because I don't think they're interested. But why not? You see, because, I mean, why should they be interested? Well, because life is such a mess, you know. Uh, but they do. But it's all they have their little, little uh, harbors in which they're sheltering themselves. No, but that's an illusion. I mean, why do uh, they? Uh, you say it's an illusion. To, to me, them, it's, it's not. I know it. I, I know. But why does the brain resist seeing this illusion? You see, very often people get shocks which show 
that something is wrong, and then uh, you know they you go back. They go back. No, of course. And the question you, know, you still have. You see, we have to get through this tendency to go back. You know that. You see, whatever the shock may be, the brain may go back. You yes. see, even let's say we listen to the person who really sees, and there's a shock, and maybe the brain will then go back later. You're asking why does it go back? Yeah. Oh, that's very simple, because your habit is tremendous years of tradition mm -hmm. and all the rest. Habit. Yes, but then that's still the same... Uh, you know, same circle. The same circle. You see, you know, the only answer which is an adequate one is one that will stop it. You see, in other words, that uh, as I see it, an explanation which doesn't end this thing, you see, is not a, a, a full explanation. So does explanations... Yeah. It doesn't do, but you but you just explained it by saying it was habit. You see. No, I'm just saying yeah. I can. I say it's habit, and we can go yeah, back then, and forth. That, that doesn't get anywhere. That doesn't get anywhere. No. So what? What makes me break? Uh, and what may, brings about the, uh, to the damaged brain a total mm, what? Yes, it, it will see and not go back. Not go back. It's a, a man sees organization of any spiritual movement is useless yes. and he drops it instantly, never goes back to it, hmm? never cultivates it, never organizes it again. Now what has taken place in that man? He's, he perceives the truth of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, but let me say something. You see, that uh, you have said that man, um, that young man, was not actually deeply conditioned in the first place. Let me take, now, we have to consider another man who was deeply conditioned in the first place. Now, I'm, let's say I'm, there's the man who was not deeply conditioned in the first place. He I'm sees the, the falseness of organized pursuit of truth, and he drops it. Drops it. Now... The but that's fairly easy because that, it was never very deep. Yes, but the other man is conditioned. Yes, much stronger. Much stronger. And he never, he may temporarily see it and then goes back to it. Unconsciously he begins to slip back. No. Yes. yes. Can that man be shocked? I mean, after all, you, there have been electronic, electric shocks to an insane man. Well, they yeah. don't make, uh, no, they don't really change much. They don't change much. Like, can you shock me? Well, yes, at other times you've said, you know, shocks are no use, you see. That I know, I'm just asking. Yes, yeah, no, I can shock you, but I go back it, more. It'll go back. I mean, it may work for a while, you I see. I know. No, so what, what is the thing that makes makes me see something and end it, and not go back. Do you see that thing? Right, the floating in the air. Yeah, it's yes. a feather. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what makes it? See, sir. Because they haven't been able to do this, they say, well, only for the few. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not many. Many cannot change. Well, yeah. One could put it like this, that perhaps the brains have been damaged too much too for much. most. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that, that, you don't accept that. I don't quite... That's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> What makes it? 
you see something and it's finished. Hmm? Right? I don't see it, but you point it out, I see it, and then for a few months or so days, I, I see it, and mm -hmm. suddenly it disappears, or I'm back into no, that. So I think it's more likely to so say you're gradually slipping into... Slips out. Yeah, All right. Uh, slipping into the old... Old head. No. Uh, what, what is the thing that makes it... So is it, I'm just is it Is attention a conscious process? Well, uh, apparently, I uh, can say it's not. You say that. Yes. Huh? Hmm. That may be this unconscious that we talked about. Uh, yeah. If it is not a conscious or unconscious process, we, that is uh, not a process of time, not a process of thought, which is conscious and conscious. <coughs> <coughs> is there another kind of attention <coughs> which acts and is over? I'm just trying to find mm. out. Or would you say, you know, as we said the other time, that it's uh, something beyond attention that acts? Yes, that's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. If you tell me, rationalize my attachment, my reactions, my defenses, my etc., etc., et rationalize it, I listen rationally, logically, and it's still within the field of thought. Hmm? And within the field of mm, that thought, whatever thought does cannot produce such a, a permanent radical transformation. Hmm? Yes. Now, you have explained to me rationally, and you say, that is not enough. You won't change if you remain there. You'll go back to it. And you point out to me, you say, look, don't, don't think. <laughs> hmm? Don't rational. Just listen to me. Don't control, don't resist, don't... Just listen. That listening is not, you are not appealing to, to the rational, thoughtful process. You are appealing to something that is beyond thought, beyond my usual consciousness. You are appealing to something much deeper in me. You are touching which has nothing to do with rational, uh, with, with the movement of thought. Mm -hmm. Would that be right? You are appealing to me at a level of which I am not aware, of which I am not conscious. And you are appealing... Oh, yes. Wait a minute, sir. You are appealing to me at a level which may be called compassion, which is not the, at the level of thought. 
if you appeal to me at that level, how can I? I can't go back to the former habits, and I can't go back. Is that possible? So, is <coughs> sorry, is love <laughs> the factor of profound change? Not, not all the movements of thought and all the explanations, all the pros and. Or would you say, is it truth? You see, previously we said yes, it was truth. Truth. But is there a distinction, you see? Uh, no, of course not. It's the whole thing. Truth is love uh, and compassion, everything. Hmm? I just want to see if yes. that is so. Can you appeal to... Uh, can you, out of your compassion, out of your love, touch something in me that transforms me? Because you, to you, there is the truth. You see truth as something, you know, all that, and you live in that. You have that feeling of, you know, all that, and from that you speak, and you say, "Well, my friend, you have tried to do it for fifty years and you haven't done it." Mm -hmm. And to that there would be ordinary answer. The brain are too damaged, and therefore there are very few brains who are not damaged. Perhaps you can affect them. Mm -hmm. That's all. Well, but that's, that's just answer. that is not a complete answer. Mm. Therefore, we go back to the old thing, only few. We follow all the rest of it. Well, one view would be that only a few in this would spread or something like yes, that. Yes, yes, few but means spread and all the rest. Yeah, no. Now that you follow. Well, now you're, you're not accepting that. No, but, but we are, that's back into culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, back into time, back into the whole business of it. Tradition. Again, a new damage. <laughs> This is what actually takes place. Hmm. Wait, now you're saying that, yes, uh, uh -huh. if we, <coughs> if we are using culture in order to bring order to the mind, then this will damage the brain. Right. Right? But and then, what can we use culture for? And we can use it technically, or technically. you can enjoy it. I suppose enjoy you enjoy it, the yeah. music. No, so just me. Yeah. No. What shall we do? Hmm. You speak out of that, out of the depth of that, something immense. And I listen to you, and you affect me at that level. Temp it, la it, lasts, it is a temporary affair, hmm? and I go back to my old damage. You have healed me, uh, not completely, partially, and the old damage takes over. Mm -hmm. Yes, sorry. Or can you heal me? You can't heal me. You are talking to me at such depth <coughs> that that very listening is healing the whole thing. Why doesn't it happen? Mm. 
you tell me very clearly, don't be attached. And you explain to me. And uh, your explanation is out of that compassion, out of the out of the perception of truth. <coughs> and I I see it. I have an insight into it, but I lose that insight. Yes, you see. Uh, I think that uh, maybe there's some clue in the nat in the nature of the brain damage. You see what it does. That it this insofar as it distorts perception. You see the uh, the whole thing depends on perception. Huh? Yes. Clear perception. Now, <coughs> this brain damage, you see, can produce what appears to be <coughs> perception. At least uh, <coughs> what it takes <coughs> to be perception. That. <coughs> Uh, oh, but but we, but it felt. <clears throat> I mean, uh, the difficulty is that that is what comes in slowly, unconsciously. You see, uh, an attribution of things, of properties, which the brain takes to be the same as perception. Yes. Uh, no. But but you are appealing. I know. I understand. You are appealing some to me, something much greater. And I respond to it for a few days, a few months, and it's gone. <clears throat> or I say, please remind me of it. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me read books and keep on memorizing that I follow, and I lose it. What the why? <clears throat> Is it, sir, I will come back to the same thing, is it that my brain, not only damaged, but refuses to see anything new, because whatever you say might lead me to such danger? Well, the brain attributes danger to seeing something course, new. Of course. You know, it appears to perceive danger. That yes. Is, in other words, something happens in which the uh, brain projects danger into that situation. It is thought, but it, it comes back as if something seen. Do you see? So you say, so you attack fe fear. <laughs> you follow. What? So you talk about fear. You talk yeah. about pleasure. You talk about yeah. suffering. And you and you say, look, look, please listen to me for God's sake, out of your heart, listen to me. But I I listen to you, but I go back. But, you know, you can keep on um, the. Uh, see, there's also the culture which uh, continually brings it back. You see, there's in any relationship within this cultural frame of reality, uh, the, that frame of thought is already yeah, there. Already you there. You see, so uh, so everything is quite, uh, quite, quite. <coughs> uh, <coughs> How does this? Open? Are you appealing to me, talking to my daily unconscious consciousness? Are you talking to me, sh showing in that consciousness mm. there is no answer? Mm? I, I, you are. Are you talking to me at that level? Or are you talking to me, not only at that level, mm. because you have to talk at that level, but you also talk to me at a much deeper level. And it may be I am not used to that deep level. Yeah, so that could be. Huh? I think so, there's more like it. I've always gone to the well with a little bucket. And you come, you say, look, that little bucket won't do anything. You just... 
and it'll, it'll quench your thirst momentarily. So you're not talking to me at the level which I am used to. You're talking to me at a deeper level which I am not used to. And I get used to it while I'm talking to while you're talking to me. And the moment you stop talking to me, it's gone. Well, at least in time, yeah. Hmm? I, either that moment or later. Yes, yes, I mean. But, uh, so I'm not... I, is it, sir, that I want to reduce everything into habit, the brain? You follow me? Mm. What you say, I see at deep level. And what I have seen, I reduce that or make that into a habit. And therefore, I lose it. And you, te you tell me, at that leap level, there is no time, there is no habit. It, you can't um, re capture it by your brain. Your brain will make into a habit, into a cus into a tradition, into a another uh -huh. damage. So you say, don't, don't do that. <laughs> yes. Well, the, the the thing is that thought tends to accompany everything that happens. Mm -hmm. You see, and it gives mm -hmm. an imitation mm -hmm. and accompaniment, like music or accompaniment. Right, right, which builds up, and that becomes the habit. Now then, the thought takes that habit as the same as the original. Same. Or at the beginning, thought says the accompaniment is helping, and later it, mistake, it mistakes that accompaniment for the thing itself, right? Yes. Yeah. But you tell me, hmm. see the whole structure of thought. Be tremendously aware of it. Yes, it seems to be part of our tradition that there should be some thought, you know, that we, that this thought should not stop, you know, that... Yes, yes. That... Uh, in fact, every tradition must demand that thought doesn't stop, I mean. Yes, of course. Uh, Quite right. Every tradition is that. See, I think that I was reading, I mean, this may throw, add a little bit, that, uh, see, when children are brought into a tradition, you see, you can see that when they f follow the tradition, you see, everybody says, that's right, you're good, and so on, you know, and when you don't follow it, they say, no, you should, no, it's bad. And so that the child begins to feel very good and secure in the tradition. See, when he's following tradition, he feels he's a good oh, boy. Good. And when he's not following it, he's a bad <laughs> boy. boy. And... Uh, the uh, so therefore there may be a habit of you know of going on with that whole uh, tradition fitting into it either the momentary one or the long the old one and uh, also the thought becomes uh, disturbed and frightened you see and moving out of the tradition you see that that you will yes, lose yes. that security that belonging to a community in which. That there is consensus yes. about what is real. You see, it's, it's much deeper than personal gain, even. Gain, of course. Of course. Because it, this community gives a consensus as to what is real and right and true and good. And uh, when you're in it, you feel it's all settled. You see, it's safe. You see, quite, quite. And, and uh, therefore, getting out of it might mean, you know, chaos. You see, it means the entire... Uh, you see, I think that, see, when it's not generally realized, the... Uh, how significant it is to uh, be out of tradition, do you see? The, see, mostly you say, well, I'm free of tradition, I don't do this, or I'm not a Catholic anymore, <laughs> <Quite>. <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but that, that's not it. But tradition goes back to that feeling of belonging to the family and the community, yeah, of course, of course. and of being sort of felt that, that you were approved of because you are doing not only doing what they say you're supposed to do but believing what you're supposed to believe and believing in what is real you see uh, 
see everybody I think we are trained you no know, this tradition includes belief that we have a, a correct consensus as to what is real do you see in other words that we don't create our reality yes quite I understand all that. Uh, but in fact we do you mm -hmm. see but you see <laughs> and uh, uh, now all of that goes against now if you say we're going to talk to this this deep level it just goes against all that. It goes against all that. And that, you know, uh, works in very subtle ways to uh, start working, you know. Uh, so just me. Yeah, I mean, you've got to reach all of that. <laughs> Can you, who speak out, you are talking out of, from that depth mm. to me. And I have this... I, I don't even talk about it. I have an insight into it. I feel it. I know what. I, can can you not help me? Can you? Can I sustain it? Yeah, I see. It's a question. So there's no no tradition of uh, the man's tradition of mystery, man's tradition of rationality. You see, the in other words. Man's old tradition was mystery. Then came the modern tradition of no mystery, no of mystery. rationality, and of, of being. Uh, uh, but uh, to be free of this, of every form of tradition. Yes, sir. Uh, That's what you are asking me. Yes, I mean. And, you say, look, every form of tradition. And you see, at first sight, one would say, well, you can't do it. You see, in other words, uh, because. One feels, you know, culture gives you the, your culture gives you the chance to yeah. think of and look at these things and so on. It also gives you safety, gives safety, you security, place in the community, and, and also family. it gives you an order in, in the mind and so on and so on. You see now, uh, and uh, now you see that the point is. That all of this is the result is, is damage, you know, is somehow, you know, is, yes, is yes. distortion. It's the yes, damaged sir. brain, you see. I think that's the firmest point that I can see. You see that? Yes. That. Uh, I, I. You have explained to me all that. Yeah. You, 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 as clear verbally, intellectually, every way it's, you made it perfectly clear to me. Hmm? Fear is involved. A place is involved, a security is involved in tradition. Uh, if I leave it, yeah, it's just distortion. It's the readiness to believe whatever will make me feel better that, and so on. Yeah, all that. And you say, I'm not talking to that. Mm -hmm. Because if I talk to that, you are merely going round and round in circles. Right? Well, beyond a certain point. Of beyond, beyond no. you are, I'm, you're not mm. talking to me at that level at all. You're talking to me at a level that, at that level which is not this. Now that you say that's the function or the part of the brain that is not conditioned, is not. I don't know. You don't know. We, I don't know, but there is a depth which. He is not touched by the brain, by the brain. by the by the uh, traditional mm -hmm. brain, by the damaged brain, by the brain which is conditioned, which is uh, all the rest of it. Uh, <coughs> a, a depth, a dimension, which is not touched by thought. All that's what you have said about tradition. Everything is the process of thought, and that process of time has not touched this. You talk to me, you showed it to me. <coughs> and
if there is an action from that, the brain can never be damaged again. Mm. It may be <coughs> that you are talking to me at that level heals the brain completely. Yeah, like you were saying last time that the there is a direct uh, action on the matter yeah, of the brain. My brain. I think there is something in mm -hmm. this. Now, is this the only way not to say it, uh, you see this is a that it depends on somebody having a parent who was not conditioned who can talk from that depth naturally if you're healthy you can talk to me yeah but i mean so that it, if there were only conditioned people then they would never find a way out i mean absolutely no. hmm. how can the damage of course in all the rest of it hmm. yes you see it it, it goes against uh, Tradition. <laughs> tradition, of, the modern tradition of saying that, you know, even some of what you say, that we must discover, see, let's try to get it clear, that our, you know, another, we must observe and discover and find our way out. Now, if the brain were not damaged, then it could do that, obviously, yeah. but see, if it is Being damaged, damaged, it cannot do it. Therefore, it But did, you, uh, ah, that's it. Why? You realize it cannot do it. Yes. Therefore, you stop. You stop, but I mean, it was you who, it was the one who... Uh, was not damaged, who uh, communicated this, right? Who, from yeah, at a deep, at a yeah, depth, right? Yeah, let's, uh, wait. Mm. <coughs> I realize by your talk, by reading, talking, mm -hmm. doesn't matter how I realize, that the b damaged brain, whatever it do, whatever it does, will still be in that area. Yes, now there may be a, a con see that there's the tendency of this damaged brain to come to conclusions and present them as facts, uh, you see. Yes, Therefore, so, I realize all yeah. the tricks of the damaged brain uh, does. Yes, and see, one of the tricks is to say, you know, nothing can be done. Yes, nothing can be done. Go, you quite, see. Quite, quite. Or else I'll keep on working on it. You see, the. Uh, I don't know if you saw it last night. <clears throat> Young man singing these folk songs and all that. Thousands of people. It is another. You follow, sir? Mm. Sounds. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? That was a, another uh, attempt of the brain to heal itself. Right? Yeah. But, you know, in a false way. False that, way. Uh, to escape, to... It can't do anything socially, it can't do anything morally, it can't do anything scientifically, it can't do anything artistically. At least you can go and listen to this rot going on and wobble about the place. Can can the damage can the damaged brain? Uh, of course, if it's completely damaged, you can't no. do anything. No, you see, then there's always the feeling, you know, that if something, see, one has to look at it carefully. If something has been damaged materially, perhaps it can never be repaired. repaired you see, it. no, quite. It we not, don't know. It, we yeah, don't know, right? We don't know. We are unless it's completely damaged, you can't do anything no. about it. You can ready for an asylum or whatever it is. But we are talking of fairly uh, not too damaged brain. Well, then we don't know, but say that uh, you cannot know whether the damage can be healed or not, right? Yes, yes. But then. No, wait, wait. Yeah. I, you talk and you explain all this and you say whatever the damaged brain, which is the result of thought and tradition and all the rest of it, whatever it does will produce further damage. So, I, because you say that, you point it out, I realize that. Hmm? That is the first yeah. necessity, isn't it? I realize it. Then, you talk, after, after I've realized it, you talk to me at a, at a depth which is nothing, which thought has not touched. You see, no, I don't simply want to 
you planted a seed, and then all oh, that's wrong. See, my question is, sir, why do I, once having had an insight into that depth, why should I be caught and go back into the old thing? That's what the question is. Will I ever go back? If I really, if you if you if you have pointed out that depth and I and I have an insight into that depth and I, I perceive that depth, can I ever go back to the other? However, de- huh? will not your saying act as a tremendous shock or tremendous jolt? Well, I mean, there is this point we're just discussing that a, a brain may get used to any shock or jolt. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm. And therefore, uh, therefore you, therefore you, I have to be very, very clear. The, the structure of thought and all the rest of it, absolutely clear. Otherwise, the the depth becomes the habit. Mm-hmm. In you are pointing out to me the oh, the from the whole activity of thought. Thought, because I am very serious, I am very concerned. Thought does stop. And and the feeling of the depth can never become a habit. Because uh, depth, when depth becomes habit, it becomes mm. pleasure, tradition, all the rest of it, fear, losing it, and all that. Now, is that depth within the within consciousness? Well, you see, we back now. Uh, before, you know, you said there's another kind of consciousness. And that's right, it's not in that consciousness. Uh, that's what I want to get at, too. It's not... Well, perhaps we could say it's neither in this right half of the brain nor the left, I mean, that... Yeah. Uh, I don't know anything about the right know, or but, left. But uh, it's not in the area of, of thought. Hmm. Thought cannot capture it. No. You see, there's this other consciousness, would you say, this is still a function of the brain, right? Do you mean to say that it's going on in the brain? Now, if you say brain, in the sense it's a, it is the product of time... Well, I don't know what, whether it's the product of time or not, you say... It's the product of evolution, product of well, uh, great, you know, well, from the cell. Yeah, we still haven't made you know some of those points clear, because, you see, if you say nature is continually, uh, you know, it's cultivated, it's growing. And wouldn't you say that, say, there is a creation in nature as well, right? Yes. Now, would you say nature is the product of time? It is and it's not. Really. Yes, well, that's what we're trying to get hold of, yeah. you see, and that maybe yeah. so of the brain too, the, mm. because the brain has ar- arisen in the same way as natural, other natural things. Or is it... Uh-huh. Yes, yes. Right. Or is it cultivated carefully? Yeah. Mm? But I mean, if we take uh, the evolution of, of, you know, of all sorts of plants and animals naturally, now in one sense it seems to happen in time, right? Yes. They, one, you know, one animal is born, it dies, the next one, the next one. So on, you see. So you have growth. And the generation of instinct. Yes, and, but then there's change. No. There's always a mutation. And then another growth occurs and so on. Now, See, wouldn't you say that's a kind of creation? 
I mean, you see, it, meaning creation, meaning cause to grow, right? Ah, yeah. Creation in the sense, yes, to create, cultivate, yes, growth. And then what? So what are... All right, now the brain has grown also in such a process, you see. You see, one has to get clear about this time because, let's say, there were the animals and there were various mutations, the monkeys, the other animals, and you know, and there were appeared creatures with bigger and bigger brains producing, finally, modern man. Now, that seems to have taken time, you see. Yes. Yes. And It seems to have taken time, yeah. Although, I don't know if you agree entirely on that. You say you say it has and it hasn't, I mean. <laughs> I'm just asking myself. Uh, I suppose it has, in one mm-hmm. sense, hasn't it? Yes. Yeah. So the brain is not only the product of culture and time, <coughs> but isn't there also a thing, part of the brain, outside the brain, uh, uh, which is not of time? Well, that's the thing we want to come to, you see, because uh, there is a structure of the brain which so has evolved through time, time. you see. And that's, uh, granted. And that may go beyond thought, that structure. You see, for example, it may involve attention, awareness. Yes, it may involve... Aha, aha, I see what you're trying to say. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying brain evolves in time. In that time, there is awareness, attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beyond thought. It's not culture and not thought. It is still within that area. Of time. Of time. Yes, it's certain. As uh, all sorts of species have appeared in nature. Nature. Mm -hmm. And, see, in some sense, it seems that some kind of creation goes on in nature, which appears to involve time. Yes. Although perhaps very long time, but... Yes. uh, And send this. Now... Is attention... Mm-hmm. Now, at least the brain which can give attention to, you know, uh, it took time to evolve, right? Uh-huh. Now, the that? brain which is able to give, to have attention. You see, let's take a, a much smaller brain of, say, a, I don't know, a small animal. Mm-hmm. Now, its attention is in some way a lot less than what is possible to a man, or would you? Of course. Mm-hmm. And how the difference of those two took time for the brain Evol- to evolve. Yeah, yes, yes. So the capacity for attention depended on time. Yes, yes, huh? yes. But is there an attention which is not of time? No, that's, <laughs> is there, you see, that's the... Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the attention itself may not be of time, do you see? I'm yes. trying to say that the brain... Yeah, attention itself is not of time. No, the, the, the ability of the brain to have attention depended on time, you see, yeah. on a structure Yeah, the capacity, develop. yes. But attention itself is not... Not of time. time. But it may be taking place in the brain, right? Yes, not of that's time. right. That's right. Ah, that's right. Uh, yes. Attention itself is out of time. But the capacity to have attention may involve time. It involves growth, growth. And culture. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, yes. and also, you see, uh, you have also said that uh, as the brain grows older, it grows more mature, and you know, more its capacity in some way improves, right? Yes, and if it is, of course. Yeah, and that, that seems to involve time, time in a way. Quite, see, so. quite, quite. So, therefore, uh, in some way, Time is involved to produce a certain capacity. Capacity means time. Yeah, but now something may happen within that capacity, are you saying, which uh, is not of time. Yes, yes, that's so right. So that in some sense Attention time is... in itself is not time. Mm, yes. But the capacity to have attention may involve time. It depends on growth. Yes, and all so the rest of it. The young child has a different capacity. Mm. So you, we are seeing <laughs> growth is time, time is necessary, but attention is not right. Yes, and truth is not. And so yeah, truth and, is and not. Compassion is not. Yeah, passion, none of that is in time, right.
and that compassion or truth may operate on the you're saying on the material structure of the brain. So yes, sir. The, yes, sir. The, 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 yes, and so on. Yes. So the brain has changed physically. physically. It's, even its time behavior yes. is different. Yes, you know, yes. new, something new has introduced into time. I mean, that's right. That's uh, right. But I mean, while we're at it, you see, we could get more clear on creation. Because you see, creation means to cause to grow. We say literally, and and the uh, now you say perception is creation. You have said right. Yes, perception is cause to grow. Is it? No. No, but I'm trying to <laughs> get it clear. Creativity clear. is perception. You see. Yeah. But you see, we have to get clear on what what is meant yeah. because you see, ordinarily Listen. the very word creation means to cause to grow, and we can say nature is creative; it causes new species to grow, and so yeah. on. Yes. Yeah. Now then. In what sense is man creative? Do you see? In what sense? Uh, you see, he may let's say Beethoven had an insight, and this gave rise to uh, certain new music, right? So in yeah. that sense, it caused new music to <laughs> to grow. No. But I want to be more clear about creation. You see. But but sir, was the thing uh, the depth was that the depth which produced that yes. music? Hmm? The depth is not of time. No, no. But couldn't we say that perhaps even in nature, the depth which brings about something it's new central. is not of time? You see that, in other words, the mechanical explanation of nature is only limited. Limited. It won't cover everything. Agree. And the creation of new forms in nature may also depend on uh, on what is beyond time. Yes, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yes, maybe we don't know. No. But uh, but in a human, I mean. One can see from oneself. Compassion is out of time. Truth is out of time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And the depth from which that comes, that compassion, is is out of time. Mm-hmm. Yes. And therefore it is not cultivable. No, it cannot be made to grow. You grow. See. It cannot be made to grow. So we say the origin, of the the essence of creativity does not grow, is what you're saying. That's but right. but That's creativity right. may cause something to grow in the field of time. Yes. Is that I fair? Mean, yes, 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 I, yes. Uh, because uh, you know it could, for example, yes, yeah. Huh? Yes, that's quite right. Uh, because and anyway, that's what we have in mind that the new perception should cause the growth of a new society and a new yeah. man, right? New man, quite. But creativity itself, in essence, does not grow. I mean, this uh, is in a, essence, no, yeah, no, it does not. It is not it created. Is crea- yeah. <laughs> it's not created. That's right. Good. Um, But out of that thing which is not created, there can be a new man. Yes. A new society. Yes, I mean, the, the, this creates a new uh, brain that is yeah, not damaged. Yeah. I mean. Go back to the point. <clears throat> Why do I lose it? I have an insight into that profound thing, and it's lost after a day or after a month. Or it is. Or it's not lost at all, but comes same thing. Because I mean, all my tradition says, hold on to it. Hmm? Yeah. Make it into a habit. Make it into bring it into the, <laughs> all the rest of it. How how subtle it all this is, huh? Yes, well, and I just make it into a tradition, ah. another tradition.
अच्छा अच्छा डाई टू एवरी थिंग दॉट हेज बिल्ट एज क्रिएशन एज ट्रेडिशन I think you see you you speak from that depth, and I listen to you, and you explain all the movements of thought. It's time. I that I understand very easily. And you see. So time must have a stop, otherwise you can't. There is no depth. So I hunger after it, packed in all the rest of rubbish rules. But if I listen to you and see the truth of what you say, not the rationalization of what you, but the truth of what you say. The truth being the perception of what you say, the total perception of what you say. I can only do that against all the pressure, tradition, everything that says, "Don't do this." <laughs> <laughs> which also says do it but absorb it in this tradition. yeah do it in order to get something else yeah. mm. so I'm back so I, what you tell me I have to understand the subtlety the reality the, the depth of that reality that thought is etc But you see, I, I won't listen to you when you go to such, mm. you follow, to such extreme. Uh, yeah, it's hard to listen. I mean, uh, if you propose a bending all tradition, all culture, all exactly everything, then uh, you know, the brain may say, "All right," but it, it sort of rejects it. Oh, for God's sake, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, sir. See the the Chinese uh, reputed to have absorbed all their conquerors. You see that all the barbarians came in and came they all in. became Chinese. <laughs> that's how it survived. Yeah. You see, so that's what happens. Yes, yes. <laughs> the non-tradition yes. becomes tradition. You see. Yeah. That's what the Hindus did with the Mughals. Mm -hmm. Quite. I think that is the most subtle feature by which the tradition absorbs tradition. the non-tradition. Non -tradition. <laughs> <laughs> um. You see, sir, but I have to listen to you, hmm? or read you, or I have to be entirely with you in this mm. i can't because my wife is angry or i i am mm -hmm. everything is against this mm -hmm. i have no leisure I have, you know Yeah, and also to communicate with people, use that frame, the traditional frame. I know. It takes over. 
It struck me, I don't know if you were reading this morning, I just read that parapsychology. Yes, I, I read I, it the other day. Read, yeah. That's a new game they're going to mm -hmm. go into. Yeah, well, it's already being absorbed into a new tradition. <laughs> new <then>. tradition. I'm just <laughs> thinking of that this morning. Yeah. Uh, No, sir, how can at Brockwood, how can you make those, not make, how can you tell those students all this? And they will absorb the reality of what you are saying and the truth of what you are saying. The reality, you know what I mean, and the truth. How can they, if I was a teacher, there, and I see what you are saying to be absolute truth, And I want to tell them about it. I want them to be non-traditional mm -hmm. in the real sense. They come there conditioned, damaged, And the teachers are damaged. So, okay. what can you do? The whole society is against this. Yes, well, yes. Hmm? everything is against yes. this. See, the student or the child is in a society of his own which has its tradition and mm -hmm. demands its, uh, mm -hmm. you know, its reality, you know, it determines its own reality. And therefore, perhaps it's like the Australian and what you say is unreal. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> the tradition of reality, quite right. Yeah. Uh, you know, to him, the real thing is what he's doing with his friends, you know, and uh, you know, how they're getting together and uh, their relationships and so on and what he's going to do afterwards in society. So, see, this thing probably must seem unreal when you first hear it. No, it doesn't fit your of course reality. So. Now, it's my job mm. to see that they get... Hmm. To see that they... <coughs> They understand this. Everything is against mm. it. Sex, <laughs> pleasure. Mm. Yeah, well, that's Money. Yeah, Everything yeah, is against it. All those things which people say are really important, mm. you see, are the real life and so on. You, know, you see, it may seem like sort of the tools. You know, if somebody first hears it, this is all abstraction, you know, it's a 
you know, it's very uh, distant from reality. Yeah. Unless he <coughs> is very <coughs> dissatisfied, and unless he feels unhappy with reality. You see, in other words, uh, think that it must depend on a person.